Hey guys, hanging out with Casper in here. Uh, we just finished doing up a bunch of tours today here at Everglades Outpost in Homestead, Florida, where I do my underwater gator tours with Casper. Uh, but today we want to do a video talking about uh, the danger and risk and, and really like risk assessment working with dangerous wildlife. I get a lot of questions about that. So I want to try to do a video kind of like going into that on detail and how we think about it and whatnot. So uh, just to preface it, I have been very fortunate. I have never had a bad accident. I've worked with alligators for over, I mean, really my whole life. I'm born and raised in Florida, but I've been working professionally with alligators for about 20 years. And I do feel very lucky. I've never had a bad accident. I have had a lot of friends that have. And um, it's, it's really kind of hard to put in perspective. An analogy that I often use is I compare it to driving a car. And so like, if you don't know a lot about alligators and you're like, oh, you know, this guy got bit by an alligator. You're gonna be like, oh my God, wow, is he missing his arm? Did he, you know, did he die? Like what happened? Because most people think of an alligator bite as like, you're dead, right? Because it could be. But an analogy I often use, and we'll, we'll Casper, come. We'll get him back over here. So keep the video interesting. You can look at him. Nobody wants to watch me talk for 20 minutes. But um, so the analogy I often use is like, imagine you're like an alien and you meet humans and you read a statistic and you learn that one of the one of the leading causes of death for modern humans is car accidents and so you ask your your human you meet like oh have you ever been in a car accident and like yeah i've been in five and they're like what how are you not dead people die in those every day all the time you've been in one and you're not dead it's like well yeah because you can have a fender bender or you can get totaled okay and so there is that that spectrum of damage that can occur in a car accident or working with animals and so like i have friends that have been totaled and i have other friends that have had a ton of fender benders like i have i'm not going to name names so don't ask because i i don't know if the people i'm talking about want to have their stories told and i don't want to represent them without asking them um, some of my friends, maybe at some point I'll have them talk about their own experiences in a video, but I have like some friends that have been bit by alligators. I, I got one guy over 50 times. This guy's been bit by alligators and they're all relatively not bad bites. Um, you know, I mean, he's, he's had some gnarly ones. Don't get me wrong, but nothing like none of them are like getting totaled. He, he hasn't had any that are like really bad bite it's just a lot of like little nips and this and that and like getting lucky a lot and so he's been very very fortunate with his experience and then i have had other friends that have been straight up total you know um like and again i'm not gonna name names some of you guys might follow some of these people and i i just don't want to talk about someone without directly asking if they're okay with having their name attached to it so uh, that's why i'm kind of awkwardly explaining it because I, I don't want to like you know, put anybody in an uncomfortable situation, but I will talk about some of these things, you know, in, in vague terms. So I don't make anybody feel uncomfortable, but like, uh, one friend of mine, he, uh, got his whole, uh, arm ripped off, like from here down, completely ripped off by an alligator in one bite immediately. Like that gator. Oh, yeah. He's under. Yeah. So I'm going to put one hand on him. He's underwater right now. And he gets a little sketchy like this. So this is where I got him. I got him. George is like moving around like, mm, what's going on? Because this is where it gets dangerous. So right now I've got one hand on his neck so I can feel him if he decides to do anything weird right now. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I had one friend um, who I don't know if he's ever had any other bites or I know he's never had any other bad bites at all. And then he had one day, he a gator grabbed him and immediately rolled and just popped his hand right off like instantaneously. You know, and that's that's really bad. Um, I had another friend who has had actually he's had quite a few bites and then uh, but none of them really bad. Right. And then he had one where it, it grabbed him up here and just ripped his bicep muscle right off of the bone. And basically from like here to up here, everything this side of the bone got removed um, and eaten right in front of him by the alligator. And that, I mean, obviously that's horrific. He uh, lost a decent amount of functionality in his arm and his muscle. And like, I would, I think he's pretty comfortable talking about it. I'm going to lift cast reps you so he doesn't get creepy. You can see the camera's moving a lot because George is nervous. <laughs> is he, he's freaking you out a little bit? A little bit. Yeah, a little bit, especially as we're talking about bites and he's starting to get all underwater and get all like, Casper. There's just a lot of glare, so I can't particularly see what's happening underneath the water. Yeah. <laughs> As we talk about this horrible subject, and it's like, yeah, Casper's like, yeah, I'll show you how that works. Here, let, let's give him a treat and keep him up and interested. Let me grab one of his little biscuits here. Casper. 
Come. Come. Whoop. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. There you go. Now, giving him the treat does not placate him at all. It doesn't make him full. It doesn't make him like, oh, I'm happy now. The reason I gave him the treat is it keeps him more topside because he knows I give him the treats on the surface. And if he's not getting treats, then he's going to go under the surface and be like, oh, can I hunt something? Can I hunt you? And so I want to give him the treat on the surface so it keeps him more surface active to be able to get more food. It doesn't make him more calm. It makes his activity pattern more predictable for me on the surface, right? But, uh, but anyways, um, so yeah, I, I should do one. I should do like a little sit down, like kind of podcast with uh, that friend. I got to make sure he's okay with it first. But I mean, he talks about it. I just, a lot of you guys probably follow him. I, you know, again, I, I just really want to be respectful and, and that's why I'm going to stay vague and not say, but like, yeah, so that was a really bad one. Um, I had another friend grabbed in the hand, death rolled. I mean, his hands literally go in the wrong direction, but um, that gator let go because uh, somebody jumped in and helped him out. And so he kept his hand, albeit, you know, facing the wrong direction and they were able to fix that up. And he's, he's generally okay now. Uh, but, you know, these are examples of things like just kind of the idea of fender bender versus getting totaled, you know? So when I talk about it, you don't know how things are gonna go. And so that's why I always try to uh, prepare for the worst, you know, like hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. And that's why I'm always saying like, you gotta be careful all the time. Like just even today when I'm doing this and I'm talking and whatever, and then if I wasn't paying attention right now and he went underwater and he grabbed my leg, he could easily go into a death roll and at his size, you know, he's like a little under 10 feet, 250 pounds. He can rip my leg off my body before me and George would be able to stop him. That's how powerful they are. Now, at the same time, though, he could also bite my leg and then let go. Like, you don't know what he's going to do. He has his own brain and he can choose what he wants to do and how he's going to react depends on what he's thinking about and how we're interacting with him. And so it's just very complicated and very difficult to predict what's going to happen next. We don't know. So that's why I'm always saying like, well, you should just prepare for the worst. If that happened, expect that your leg is going to get ripped off. You know, um, I also I do a lot of work as a consultant uh, for people working with dangerous animals. And so I, I've done that on quite a few jobs. Now on these jobs, I always have to sign a contract saying I can't say what I'm doing or who I'm doing it with and whatever. But I've worked as a consultant for dangerous animals for, uh, you know, TV shows and, and et cetera. I'm not, I can't say any more details than that. But the idea being when I am trying to be a, a consultant for somebody and teach them how to work with these animals and, and what to do, um, they often ask me, well, what's the, what's the protocol if, if you get bit, what are we going to do? And I say, you don't get bit. And they're like, well, wh what do you mean? And I'm like, no, the first thing in your brain, you don't get bit. It's not, what do I do if I get bit? No, no, no. We do address that later. Absolutely. You should have a protocol for if things go wrong. If you've watched my videos, you've seen me talk about this before. But the first thing in your brain is don't get bit. You don't have this backup plan of like, well, I'm going to take this extra risk because I have a plan to help me if I get hurt. No expect to die that's how i train people like when i train george to work with alligators that's what i tell him if you get bit expect to die now are you going to die probably not you know like i was saying earlier i know people who've been bit many many times and they're still alive and and relatively fine but then i also know people that get bit and then your arm's gone the first time it ever happened you know it's just like again the car accident analogy it's like the first car accident you get in might be your last or some people you know some people are horrible drivers they've been in 20 car accidents and they're fine does that mean that cars aren't dangerous? No, obviously they still are. You know, it's just understanding this, this risk and this uh, threat assessment. And then especially in this stuff, when I'm teaching somebody like, uh, or working with snakes. I, I've been posting a lot about, you know, I was just in Thailand working with venomous snakes. And then uh, David Blaine talked about it on Joe Rogan. So I wasn't supposed to say it, but he said it. So I, I will say what he said, okay? We were, you know, helping train David Blaine to work with cobras. And so, you know, that's what we were doing. And he talked about it. And he talked about, you know, I helped train him on that. And so when I'm talking to him about this stuff, that's one of the things I say is like, no, you don't get bit. Everybody asks, well, you know, do you carry anti-venom, blah, blah, blah. No, I don't because, well, for one, you can't. Anti-venom is complicated. Everybody thinks that you can just carry anti-venom like as a magical antidote. Like, oh my God, you get bit, stick a needle. Now we're safe. doesn't work like that. It's actually very complicated. And if you watch, I did a, you know, one of my Cobra videos, you watch that one, we go in great detail on that. Some people die just from the anti-venom. It's way more complicated than people think. Watch that video if you really wanna get in depth on that. But the idea there, when I'm training somebody, whether it's snakes, 
or gators or whatever or sharks i'm like number one is you don't get bit that's the mentality that you have to have and expect to die if you do get bit because you might now chances are you won't chances are you know you might get maimed you might lose a limb you'll probably survive statistically speaking most people that do get bit usually do survive but because there is a chance you might not live you don't want to get this so false sense of security of like well you know i got this plan and so i can take this risk because i'll survive because i have this backup plan it's like you might not so you shouldn't take any risk that you're not comfortable taking so that's why when i'm training somebody like george you know i tell him all the time i'm like don't do anything that you're not comfortable doing if there's any part that you're like mm, i don't know about this then don't do it because it's not worth it because you might literally die off of one simple mistake you might get your arm ripped right off spend the rest of your life without an arm or you get your arm ripped off and you bleed out and you die you don't even make it to the hospital you know so like george would you can you make some comments on how we've talked about this and what you think well i remember specifically do i turn it towards me sure sure if you want to. Well, i don't know how ugly i look right now so i apologize <laughs> but i remember my first day working with chris on me you know him on the ideas, he, he wasn't even dead set on it just yet, but the entire time, for a whole day, Chris is just going through his phone, showing me horrific accidents of, you know, A, people missing biceps, or like the one that I remember specifically is a dude holding his own thumb in his hand. And I'm just kind of sitting there going like, is this the profession for me? Should I go down this road? But Chris did a very good job because that's, exactly what can happen at any moment i could die i've had many close calls as well so for example one of my closest what well, oh i've had i can't really say which one's one of my closest but one of the most uh violent per se was uh at the end of the day working i went to gator i have hung around many times before generally very 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 calm oh. and i've done this multiple times in the past where i'd go in the water and wash oh. the sand off my legs and I was going to do the same thing I normally do. And what was really funny too is that Chris actually walked off as well. And the second I bent down to wash the sand off my legs, he saw the opportunity and immediately shot up and tried to grab my head. And I had about a couple seconds to be able to do what kind of Chris does, you know, frontal him and push his head back to stop him from grabbing mine. And if for a couple seconds I wasn't paying attention, he very well could have literally grabbed my head and torn it from my shoulders. <laughs> Yep. So that's a good example right there, you know, and, and just like, I, I, that's one of the things I try to teach him. And when I'm teaching somebody, one of the first things I do is show them all the things that can go wrong, you know, like understand your own mortality. And, uh, a lot of people don't understand their own mortality, you know, and that's something that working with dangerous animals that like we, we learn that we talk about a lot. It's just, you, you got to understand, like, you're not immortal. And like, we live in such a safe society that we really forget that we are not special, we are not magical. And uh, well, one of my favorite ways to put it to any student that I'm teaching, I'm like, so imagine everything you've ever done in your life, every great accomplishment you've ever had, everyone you've ever you know loved, experiences, all these great things that make you, you, and everything about you can be killed and consumed and reduced to a pile of poo that comes out of that animal next week. Everything that makes you into you can be eaten by him and then pooped out within a week. All of you becomes that. And that really like, it's, it's funny in a way, you know, I, I say because it, it is kind of funny, but at the same time, when you've had an animal hunt you, oh my God, it really changes how you perceive it. Like I've had plenty of animals try to kill me. That happens all the time. I'm in life-threatening situations constantly where like I might die, but there's a big difference between being killed and being consumed. And having something see you as nothing more than another meal is a very different feeling. And until you've experienced that, it's really hard to convey to people and get them to understand, like, you don't get it. Like, he's looking at you, you are nothing but food. You are not special. You are something that keeps him full for a few hours and then you are worthless again. What? Like, that's so hard for people to understand, you know? And trying to get that through to people is difficult. Like, what, what do you think, George? But yeah, as Chris said, 
when you really get that first look and you realize that you are back a part of the food chain, it's very uh, eye-opening, to say the least. Yeah, like, we are so far removed in normal life from the food chain that we forget that we are 100% part of it. And, like, people really forget, like, you are a hunk of meat. That is what you are. And we think that we are, you know, special as humans. And it's like, no, like, you are literally a hunk of meat to an animal, you know? And, like, getting people to understand that, like, I don't think you can understand it until you experience it, you know? Like, I really don't think that, like, it's something that will be able to resonate with somebody until they've been in that situation, until they've had an animal hunt them. And it, it's a very surreal feeling. But I love that, personally. <laughs> like, now not, not like a crazy person, maybe. But, no, I, I love the idea that, like, it, it's an equalizer. Like, in the human world, we are so obsessed with money, with status, with influence, you know, all these things that are just fake. The, you know, they're, they're human concepts. It's, it's all a bunch of crap, I'm trying to say in the nicest way. And he doesn't care who you are. He doesn't care if you are the president. He doesn't care if you're a homeless guy. He, you taste the same to him, you know? And to me, like, there's something about that I really do love that, like, it, it's this great... E the <laughs> the palate is an equalizer <laughs> you know it doesn't matter if you come from a rich family a poor family whether you have money or you have zero you taste the same to him and like to me i love that you know in that like when i work with dangerous animals you gotta you gotta walk the walk you know there's so many people again in the human world they just talk the talk like they don't have real skill they don't have real ability they just talk like they do and they get away with it and like it off Honestly, it kind of infuriates me. Like, I really hate fake people, and I really hate people that are able to just talk their way through things and don't have any real skill. That's why I love animals so much. You can talk all day. He doesn't care. He doesn't know what you're saying. <laughs> like, you can't use your influence to get out of this. No, you, you have to have the ability. You have to have strength or knowledge or skill, and that's what's going to get you to be able to survive a situation, you know? Like, it's, it's, you can't talk your way out of it with an animal, you know? And, like, something about that is very pure and beautiful to me in a very weird way. And I really value that. And I probably sound like I'm insane. But <laughs> to me, I, I really do value that a lot, you know? Um, but anyways, to kind of bring this back to what we were talking about before, not taking risks you don't understand, you know? So, like, I do a lot of crazy stuff crazy stuff with animals. I don't do anything to me that is crazy. Like I don't take any risks that I don't think I can fully handle. And I'm very careful about what I do so that I make sure I'm in a situation I'm able to survive because I know I can be killed. And so although a lot of people see me doing stuff and you know, they see me up close with an alligator and you know, I'm doing stuff like this and like, oh my God, that's so crazy. It's so dangerous. And it's like, well, for me, it's not. For you, it would be because you don't know what I know. Just like it would be dangerous for me to get behind a fighter jet. I have no idea how to do that. I'm going to kill myself, you know, but those people know how to do that. I know how to do this thing. And for me to do this thing is not dangerous because I understand the animal. I've worked with him. I know what I'm doing, you know, just like the guy who's piloting a jet knows what they're doing. I don't know how to do that. I would die. So it's just having an understanding and knowing your limits. That's what's going to save your life. And I just never want anyone to you know, see what I do where I make it look easy because I am, uh, you know, very experienced with what I'm doing and I make it look easy. I never want somebody to see that and be like, oh, I could do that without knowing the risk that is behind it. And that it really is just one slip away with these guys where just a minor mistake and he's got your head and he pulls your head off your shoulders. That animal at that size is fully capable and literally under a second grabbing your head and popping it right off of your shoulders. There's no coming back from that, by the way, okay? <laughs> just, just to clarify, that means you die, okay? Um, so anyways, guys, I hope you enjoy this video. It's kind of all over the place, but it's this kind of stuff I, I think, you know, needs to be said very often to remind people. So I hope you enjoyed it. As always, like, comment, share, all that fun stuff, and we'll see you all next time.